Hey, it's Mark Podolsky, The Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, thelandgeek.com. And on today's podcast, I have to put on my anchorman voice. He's a big deal. And we're going to get right into it. Scott Todd is off uh, investing in a new airplane today. So excited for Scott. But today's guest is Randy Gage. Randy is a thought-provoking, critical thinker who will make you approach your business and your life in a whole new way. Randy is the author of not one, not two, 14 books translated into 25 languages, including his recent worldwide bestseller, Radical Rebirth. He's spoken to more than 2 million people across more than 50 countries and is a member of both the Speakers Hall of Fame and the Direct Selling Hall of Fame. Randy Gage, welcome. Hey, Mark, great to be on with you. So Randy, let's just rewind the tape. And how did you get started in helping people become more prosperous, you know, break through their barriers, uh, what's getting them stuck in life? I was in a direct selling business, building an organization, and I was doing training for my team, how to be more successful. And I got invited by other teams and then other companies and People kept asking me to train on marketing stuff, sales stuff. And I was always trying to sneak in the, the what I felt was the really important stuff, the personal growth, self-development, the mindset you create. And at one point, I had my first midlife crisis uh, right on schedule at 40. And I said, you know, I don't want to teach How do you get a candidate's phone number or how do you know? I'm going to retire. I made some money. I'm going to raise cars, drink out of a coconut, play some softball and retired. And then after about nine months, I was going crazy. And a very dear friend of mine, Bill Gove, who was the first president of the National Speakers Association, he told me, you've got to get on the platform again. You know, this, this is your calling. This is your destiny. And I thought, well, I could do it, but I'm not going to teach that marketing stuff. I want to talk about the prosperity stuff. How do you manifest prosperity? And so I'm not going to try to sneak it in the back door. That's what I'm going to teach. And let's see if anybody wants to learn it. Yeah, I I love that. I love that. And I don't think it gets enough attention. People are into tactics and more how to. But, you know, I was just reading uh, and rereading the the cash flow quadrant Robert Kiyosaki, and he's got a chapter B, do how, and how is your goal. Do is the things you need to do to accomplish that goal. But you, first is B. You have to have the traits. You have to be the kind of person to go through the whole process. So using that, I mean, Randy, what what kind of people do we need to be to be prosperous to break through? I believe we're in such a sad, sorry state of society right now that for most anybody who, who's listening or watching right now, they're going to have to go back and unlearn some stuff. Right? They're going to have to go back and say, OK, what is the core foundational beliefs that I have in my life about money and success, work and career, marriage and relationships, health and wellness. And that's what that Radical Rebirth book is about, where I'm saying, I I pick six areas of your life and say, hey, let's go see what is the core foundational belief? Is your core foundational belief about money that uh, rich people are evil and it's spiritual to be poor? Well, that's going to be a big problem if it is. Is your core belief about health that By the time you're 55 years old, you're carrying an extra 35 pounds and you're taking 10 medications a day to prevent your leg being amputated for diabetes. If so, that's going to be a problem, right? Is your, you know, what was, you know, if your parents fought with each other and uh, one abused the other or one cheated on the other, you have a core foundational belief about marriage and relationships. And most of these were set before you were eight years old. And 99 out of 100 people never go back and question them again. 
until something blows up in their life. They get laid off at 50 years old, their marriage blows up, their health, they get a horrific diagnosis. So now they go back. So I'm saying, let's be proactive and let's just do that to begin with. Let's go look at what are the, what is your, your core beliefs about these main areas in your life? And are they serving you? Or do you need to blow them up, eviscerate them, and replace them with different beliefs that do serve you? I, I love that. I love that. So from your experience, I mean, this is a really difficult thing to do. I mean, it's like uh, the, the brain is sort of this computer, if you will. Now you're, you're saying, you know, this is radical and we've got to reprogram. What's sort of the first step in the reprogramming process? It's really intriguing that you use that language because in the book, I'm talking about mind viruses memetics, you know, memes. Uh, and when people hear meme, they think, oh, that's a cute slide on Facebook or Instagram. But the term was actually coined by Richard Dawkins in his book, The Selfish Gene. And it's meme is a mind virus. And just like you get a virus on your computer, we get a virus on our subconscious mind. So if you get the virus that um, money is bad and rich people are evil, that's a mind virus. And it parasitizes the host and causes you to replicate the virus. You get programmed with it by the TV shows you watch, the books you read, the movies you watch. And you'll, you'll die when you read that chapter in the book. I mean, I take, no matter what generation you are, you grew up with, whether it was the way back when the Beverly Hillbillies and Gilligan's Island, and fast forward to today, whether it's Billions, Succession, you know, and all the current shows and movies. I'll give you chapter and verse of these mind viruses that you're getting infected by. Rich people are bad. It's spiritual to be poor. To be a good parent, you have to sell your soul. To be successful in business, you have to rape and pillage and plunder the environment and ex exploit defenseless people. There's so much of this insidious programming. So it really is like, okay, let's recognize the programming. Let's eliminate it. We got to, okay, hey, that belief that rich people are evil, that belief doesn't serve me. Let me replace it with a new belief, which is, wow, if I become wealthy, I'm going to be able to do great work. I'm going to be able to do great things for myself, for my family, for my community, for the world right? That's reprogramming. We're literally right. getting rid of one belief that isn't serving us, and we've got to replace it with a belief that serves us. I, I love it. I love it. And, and then what's sort of the next step in this radical rebirth? It's such an, it's like an incremental process, right? Because you, most of us, I was, I was broke, miserable, unhealthy, first 30 years of my life, right? Hugely in debt, all kind of drama and trauma and whatever. And so, because that's who I was programmed as, that's what I believe, that's what I manifested. And you have to, like, for me, I, I'm a big believer in taking self-development time, listening to podcasts, just like this one, reading books, watching videos, you know, giving yourself positive programming to counteract because we know there's an alert on your phone right now. Okay. Afghanistan is collapsing the world. You know, there's an earthquake in uh, Haiti. There's a war over here and there's just so much ne negative programming. You've got to mindfully choose some positive programming to counteract that. And then you've got to get to the point where, you because for me, if you would have said 10 years ago, say, hey, Randy, let's go to the movies. I'd be like, no, nah, you know, traffic is horrible. We'll never get a parking space, you know, downtown Friday night. You know, just that's my default setting at that point in my life. Right. Yeah. You got to change that percent. So now 29 percent of your thoughts are positive. You then it's 30 percent 
your thoughts are positive. And you, you have to keep, and for me, it took me about five years. And then I felt like, okay, 51%, I've reached the tipping point. So now it's pushing the snowball down the hill instead of pushing the snowball up the hill. And you got to get to that tipping point. I, I love that. I love the 51%, just being good enough. You don't have to have it at a hundred percent. It's nothing's going to be perfect. And well, that and when you get that, is hard. Yes. Yeah, just that one extra percent from 50 to 51, then the default setting is geared in your favor. It will create more. It'll create a higher positive percentage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I went through something very similar to you um, also in midlife, which is, which is interesting. And for me, you know, it didn't take, you know, five years of, of a radical rebirth. It was really slow. I mean, I fought it every single way. I, I you know, think of like the Shawshank Redemption. Like I had that rock hammer just chiseling away at it very slowly till I got to the other side. And, you know, now I'm, I'm way more calm. I'm more at peace. I'm more comfortable with who I am. I took scarcity mentality, have a more of abundance mentality, but it was really hard, Randy. I wish I knew you, you know, 15 years ago. Where were you? I wish I knew who I was today, 15 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> I wish, you know, now I feel like every three, I'm amazed at how ignorant I was three weeks ago. Right. Because right. once you really get on that path of growth and, you know, you're, my, the whole premise of radical rebirth is how do I become the highest possible version of myself? I can't be the rock. I can't be Oprah. I can't be President Obama. I can't be, uh, you know, Lady Gaga. It, it, you, you got to become the highest possible potential of you. And that's really, it's, so for me, it's always about who you can become. And that goes all the way, you know, takes us right back to the Kiyosaki uh, chapter you were referencing, where he's talking about be, I would use the language becoming, right? Becoming, right. It's, you know, to, to do and have more, you have to become more. Right, right. And, and I just, you know, I, I was, as you're talking, made me think of this, this Buddhist phrase, and I want to get your thoughts on it. Tension is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who you are. Like, I'm, I'm an expert on myself. I can't be Randy Gage, even though you're probably way better than me at 99% of things in life. I'm just, I just have to relax into who I am and do my best and try to be the best version of myself and be relaxed into that and not constantly be comparing myself to you or, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos, right. Or Elon Musk. I'm just going to constantly be unhappy. It'll, it'll, I'll never feel good enough. Yeah. So you asked my thoughts on that. I believe in the right amount of tension is ideal. So uh, I believe in a concept I call divine dissatisfaction, divine discontent, divine, divine discontent. discontent, meaning that discontent is really whether you call it God or the universe or the force that created you is just knocking on your door saying, hey, uh, Mark, I think you could be a little better at this. I think you could grow in this area. I think if you want to reach enlightenment, this would be the next step. So I feel, because let's face it, if you just say, okay, I need 27 Ferraris and 15 Lamborghinis, and I saw Jay Leno has 400 cars, I need to have 500 cars, you'll be miserable your entire life. Or, hey, Elon or Bezos, they got more money than me. I need to make more billions and trillions than they do, or I can't be happy. You'll be miserable the rest of your life. But if we just say, oh, you know, and I'm not saying you can't be happy the other way, because there are ascetics, right? Who say, no, I'm going to give away all my belongings, and I'm going to go live in the jungle, and I'm going to eat berries all day, and they're happy. 
And I'm yeah, you, you, you know the joke about the, the ascetic. What is it? <laughs> is uh, you know an ascetic like let's just say you know a Catholic priest, all they want to talk about is sex, and you know you, you talk to a prostitute, all they want to talk about is spirituality. Right, right. So you you know you can't we shouldn't be resisting these things. Like we should be accepting them. Is is sort of the joke. Like, yeah, and it's it, and humor only works because there's an element of truth in it, right? Always. Right. And that's the thing is I, I want a little bit of discontent in my life because that's what causes me to become more. And that's why I say I don't buy into the asceticism. I don't begrudge anyone who has found that works for them. I'm happy for them. It's not my place to tell them it doesn't work for them. I've just determined it doesn't work for me. I, you know, and I thought about it. I almost joined a monastery. There was a time in my life where I was thinking of seriously about doing that, right? And I just realized, no, that's, that's not the right path for me. And the right path for me, and I think for most people listening right now, is you need a little of that dynamic tension in your life. That tension that, hey, okay, uh, great. Things are really working well for me. I, I, I'm, I'm manifesting a prosperous life. But I also believe I'm called to do even more. And that can be a really healthy tension. I love it. I love it. So what's love a the- lot of stuff. What's that? You love a lot of stuff. I love it. I do. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but this is this is sort of a a subject that I don't think is talked about enough. The average guest, we're going to talk about how to build wealth, passive income, but not the person you need to become to get passive income, real wealth. Because even if you do get it, to your point, it won't ever be enough. You still won't internally be happy. In fact, I'd make the argument there's nothing out there externally that could really make you happy. It's got to start inside. And just like you were talking about those, those spokes, you know, relationships, your beliefs about money, your, your beliefs about health. So, I mean, these are things money can't buy. You can't buy peace of mind. You can't buy a fit body. You can't buy a house full of love. These things have nothing to do with money. So the radical rebirth I think then you, once you are that person, it's way easier to attain these external things and enjoy them because we all know the rich person that's miserable. So that's what yeah, I want. It's, it's important don't, for people not to fall into prey. Well, listen, money doesn't buy happiness. That's true. Let's also acknowledge poverty doesn't buy happiness either. You say, well, okay, money is, you know, the love of money is the root of all. Okay, if we're going to acknowledge that, let's also acknowledge that money and material things give you choices. Money and material things give you the self-expression, which can cause you to be happier, right? It's easier to be happy if you're not worried about are they going to cut the power off and I'm going to lose my lights tonight and the stuff in the refrigerator is going to melt, right? It, it just is. So let's be real. We don't want to go to the other extreme and demean money and material things. We just want to recognize them as part of the holistic picture of prosperity, which is money, material things, health, relationships, and spiritual harmony. And, you know, recognize, yeah, it's all part of a package. And all of those things, health, happiness, relationships, all of them are attracted not by collecting them, but by becoming the person who manifests them, by becoming that higher version of yourself. I couldn't agree more. Okay, last question, Randy, before we get to the tip of the week. What's the worst advice you see or hear given in your area of expertise of self-development, prosperity, getting to that next level of, of breaking through and being the best version of yourself? Oh, it's like 10 things, a hundred things tied for first place. You got to be hungry. You got to hustle. 
you got to take a millionaire to lunch and pick their brain. There's so much superficial crap as opposed to do the work, <laughs> the, not the work on the ditch, the work on you, the work on becoming, you know, how do you manifest prosperity? You solve problems, you add value, or you envision possibilities. That's the only three ways prosperity is created, right? It's not real estate. It's not land investing. It's not any of the things you're normally talking about on this podcast. Those are expressions of solving problems, adding value, or envisioning possibilities. So if you start to say, okay, how can I solve more problems? That's how you become wealthy. How do I add more value? That's how you become wealthy. So that's, you know, that's the advice I wish people would give more of and less of that, you know, you gotta grind it, you gotta hustle, you, you know, it's like, okay, that's cute for an Instagram post for 30 seconds of motivation, but, you know, what does that actually mean in life? <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. So Randy, we're at that point now in the podcast and your mentorship has been phenomenal, but I want to ask you for your tip of the week a website, maybe another book, something else actionable where the art of passive income listeners can go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? All right. Randygage.com is my, that's my Starfleet command site. You can find my blog there. I have a power prosperity podcast that I do every week. Uh, all of my books and all of that stuff will be there. So check me out there. Um, here's the tip of the week. I'll give you. What are you holding on to that you need to release in order to attract that what you really want? The, I love it. The vacuum law of prosperity. What are you holding on to that you need to release in order to really accept the abundance you're looking for? I love it. Well, my tip of the week is also going to be check out randygage.com and all the goodies there. But also while you're speaking, I thought of one of my favorite spiritual authors, Jay Krishnamurti. And something he would say is we're always in an internal state of revolution. You should always be internally ready for a complete change. Whenever we say we're going to try to do something or try to form a habit, we're wimping out. When our emotions want us to do something, we just do it. Don't put it off, just do it. Make yourself accountable. I love it. He's talking about a radical rebirth. That's exactly what he's talking about. So Randy Gage, are we good? Hey, and just tell Scott, he needs to buy that jet that Tony Stark had in the first Iron Man. That's the one with the big dish on the satellite dish on the back. That's the jet he needs to buy. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, I want to thank the listeners. Remind them the only way we're going to get the quality guests like a Randy Gage is if you do three favors, you got to follow the podcast rate, review it, send me a screenshot of, their, of your review to support at thelandgeek.com. I'm going to send you a signed copy of Dirt Rich, which on the secondary marketplace is going for right now $1.2 million. So please do that. I'm just joking. Anyways, uh, I'm not joking about the signed copy of the book though. So please do that favor. It really helps. Um, today's podcast is sponsored, sponsored by Flight School. Learn more, go to landgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Randy, we're going to have to do this together. You probably don't even know what I'm going to do. But I'm going to say, let freedom ring. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Peace. Thanks for listening to the Art of Passive Income podcast. Start your journey at www.thelandgate.com and www.scotttodd.net. Rate and review the podcast and email support at thelandgeek.com. Your screenshot for a free passive income launch kit.